everyone, it's Marguerite once again here to do a tutorial for a storm door wreath. What's a storm door wreath? First and foremost, it's a wreath that will fit in the four inches of space you have between a storm door and a regular door or a screen door and a regular door. You have that four inches of space to work with and this fits perfectly in there. They're generally three and a half inches deep. Um, I have this wreath fluffed out a little more so it's, it's closer to the four inch mark. But the nice thing is you can put it on your regular door, protect it with the other door. It's not going to blow away, not going to be snowed on, it's not going to be rained on, you know, all the things. It's protected that way, which has been a great addition to the wreath making community is that style. I'm going to take it off the stand so you can see how thin that is. Um, the ribbon is fluffed up a little more than usual. That's how I have them when I take pictures for the sales pages. Um, a traditional wreath tends to be between 7 and 12 inches once you throw in a bowl and that's just not going to work with the storm door. Um, the only um, suggestion I can make for that kind of wreath is if you're putting it outside you need to put it on the outside of the doors and I really wouldn't recommend putting a wreath outside unless you have a protected entryway. You want it to last. It's an investment piece and you want to enjoy it for as long as possible. So let's get started with making this wreath today so you can see how you can do it very easily yourself. Um, the, in this video, I had some challenges today. I don't know what's going on, but you'll probably have a few laughs. And sometime in the future, once I have enough, I'll have my husband put together a blooper reel so you can see some of the struggles I had. And know that no one's perfect. And anyone can do this. Okay. So in the kit you purchase, and in the kit today that I'm using, you'll receive a sunflower welcome sign, 20 inch pieces of 10 inch wide mesh. What I mean by that is this way it's 20 inches long, this way it's 10. You have 12 pieces of this mesh. I throw an extra piece in just in case you make a mistake. In this kit, you're going to get three ribbons, two sets of the two and a half inch wide, two and a half inches wide, and one set of the one and a half inches wide. They are all folded at 12 inches in length, which is the length each of them need to be for the ribbon tails. There's 12 of each plus an extra one, so that if you make a mistake, you have an extra. The reason that there's 12 of each of the ribbons and 12 of the mesh is because you have 12 pipe cleaners on your frame. You have a 14 inch frame. It must be a frame with four individual rings on it and six crossbars. Because you attach the pipe cleaners to the outer two rings at the crossbar all the way around. And then you attach the other six pipe cleaners to rings three and four, the inside two rings, in between the crossbars. So they're staggered for the layering effect. That way it covers your form and you get that layering effect. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then the tools that you'll need to provide, you'll need a good pair of scissors. I use the Fiskar brand that you don't use all over the house just for fabrics and ribbons and things like that because there is wire in the ribbon. Um, you don't want dull scissors when you're cutting the ribbon tails. You're going to need some clippers, a ruler, unless of course you have one of these cutting mats. This is what you use to cut the mesh. You never want to cut mesh on an, a naked table. You want one of these on top of it because you're going to use what's called a rotary cutter to cut the mesh, which looks like this. This is what you cut. It's also used for quilting and stuff like that, fabric applications. And then of course, you get the ruler, like I said, you, get, you need a kit, clip, Woo. a chip clip or something that's got a good grip on it to hold your mesh, and you'll see why in just a moment. And also, I almost forgot that's also in your kit, you'll get the written instructions on how to put your wreath together to go along with watching this video. Feel free to write any, any notes on it to make it easier for yourself. This is just a guide if you decide 
to make more different styles in the future. And then there's a thank you note. So my inspiration was this sign. And I always try to fit, um, pick the signs first so I know what I need. I wanted a neutral base so this can be used year round. And you, what, what you want to do is pick up the colors out of the sign to determine your ribbon choices. In this case, it, it was really easy for me because this has the buffalo plaid background behind the sunflowers, just like the sign. And then I oh, it, I generally always put a solid color ribbon in my selection. Not always, I shouldn't say that. 95% of the time, I like to break up my patterns with a solid, but you don't have to do that. You could do another print. But I went with that to match the green on the leaves. That's how I determined what I was going to use. As far as the pipe cleaners, what determined the color of the pipe cleaners, I tried to match it to the um, the mesh so that if you're putting this on a door with glass windows, you're not seeing a bunch of different mechanics of, of the wreath there. But I also think it's most important to try to match the edge of the top ribbon. And, and in this particular kit, the top ribbon is this one and the edge is black. So that's why I went ahead and chose black pipe cleaners on this, okay? So that's all the mechanics of it all. Let me move the directions out of the way. I brought some, I almost forgot. I brought some sunflower buttons because I'm gonna show you once again how to add a little element to the wreath without changing the depth of it because you know obviously a storm door style wreath needs to stay under four inches so it'll fit behind the door. But this button has what's called a shank on the back of it. You gotta have that little loop for it to really work well. You can use the other kind, but you want, again, we're trying to hide the mechanics of the pipe cleaners, and you'll see that at the end when I attach these. These are not included in the kit. These are from Hobby Lobby. They're either over in the fabrics section or over in the woodcraft sections. Okay, let me pull those out of the way and the ribbon because we're gonna start with the mesh all this stuff out of the way. Right now the only tools we need are the um, ruler and the clip and the base. When working on the base, I found for my students that having the um, base in front of you with your pipe cleaners horizontal helps you keep on track with the direction of all your elements. You'll understand it a little bit more as I go along. I, being left-handed, I don't know if that's why, but I am most comfortable with it at an angle this way. You're not wanting to contort your body, you wanna have fun. So this is the most comfortable position for me when attaching my mesh. So let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna take the first piece of mesh and you, the first rule of thumb is you always turn the mesh with the curl side down on the table, okay? Long ways like this. You take your ruler, if you don't have a cutting mat, and you measure across. This is 10 inch mesh, so you're wanting to find your center, which is five inches. That's where I put the clip on. But then I turn it around and put it at the top. Okay? Then you're gonna do that again, find your center, and that is our focal to keep centered on the mesh. It's especially important when you're using a solid colored mesh because you have no pattern to follow really. I mean, there are lines, but it's easy to get off track. You can use the um, cutting mat as well to help keep you on line. But you want to start down here. I'm going to take the ruler off now. And you're going to take your, your fingers and your thumb. You're going to put your thumbs on both sides. And what you're going to do is you're going to gather the mesh up the center, trying to stay as close to the center as possible gathering up the center towards that clip keeping the mesh as centered as possible so you get it all into your thumbs and then remove the clip and loosely hold the mesh with your thumb and your index finger because you want to get the edges to match so it's a perfect circle well maybe not perfect but as close to perfect okay that allows you to manipulate the mesh before you put it into the frame. So now, 
Rule of thumb, horizontal pipe cleaners because you're going to put your mesh in there vertically every time. With the mesh, it's always horizontal pipe cleaners, vertical mesh, okay? And I always find the first one I put on a wreath frame is always challenging, so don't beat yourself up if it doesn't look right because we have solutions to that. So tight and low, you're twisting the pipe cleaner. One, two, three. You can do two to three. You're just wanting to get it, the mesh secure into the pipe cleaner so you can manipulate it. I would, I'd always try to remember to put the pipe cleaner straight up and out of the way. So what you're going to do is, since this is cut and all mesh frays, there's no escaping it, you're going to want to put the outside cut edge over the inside cut edge and the outside cut edge over the inside cut edge, okay? Now, obviously, this is not a circle. We, we absolutely have to have a circular for, formation on the outside of the mesh, so whenever adjusting your mesh, you always hold the pipe cleaners. Never pull the mesh from the edge always pull it from towards the base of the pipe cleaners to get your get your circle okay now this is way out that's not going to work I mean you can but you don't want to do that so we're going to grab it here I'm going to grab it from underneath to bring this out and get it lined up Okay, still needs a little work. Hold it from there, bring it up, okay. And then curl under the outside edges. That helps it to stick to itself because believe me, mesh is like Velcro. So also on that note, try to make sure that you're not wearing good clothes and also make sure you're wearing short sleeves so you're not getting stuck to the mesh all the time. That needs to come out a little bit more. Grab it from underneath. Okay. So that's much better than what I started with. Now, when I do these wreaths, I put the mesh in every other pipe cleaner. Why do I do that? That, in my opinion, helps it to lay flatter and gives it a, a pattern and dimension. So we're going to skip this one, and then we're going to bring this one in front of us. Making sure that the pipe cleaner's horizontal to us. Grab another piece of mesh, lay it curl side down on the table. Get the ruler out. Find your center, which is five inches, because this is 10 inch mesh. Make sure that clip is on there securely so it doesn't come off. Turn around your piece of mesh so that the clip's at the top. Take that ruler, find your center again, which is five inches, and start gathering the mesh in your thumbs, crawling up the center of the mesh with your fingers on both hands, bringing it all into your thumbs. Get to the top, remove the clip, hold it loosely in your hands, in your forefinger and thumb, get that lined up like you want it so you're not having to manipulate it so much in the pipe cleaners <coughs> excuse me bring your frame back over to you put it in centered put that mesh in vertically into the horizontal pipe cleaners twist the pipe cleaner tight and low two to three times so that's one two three the reason we're doing the pipe cleaner tight and low is because we want to make sure to keep the depth of this wreath thin so that if you are putting it on a door that has a storm door on it, it won't get too tall and crushed. <coughs> Pardon me, guys. So now you're going to take your outside cut edge over the inside cut edge, outside cut edge over the inside cut edge. Remember, the reasoning for that is to protect the cut exposed edges as much as possible. Make any adjustments you need to make to get your circle. The outside edge is what's most important because that's what's going to be seen. Don't beat yourself up if it's not perfect. There's no such thing. 
I, I'm cutting off any frays that happened from when we were putting them in after being cut. So now that I have it in, I'm going to try to turn the outside edges under as much as possible. It won't always stay that way, so don't beat yourself up on that either. But make sure that you have that mesh in there. And you have a good circle going on on the outside edge, okay? Like that. Um, there's all that. Curl in the edges and moving on to the next one. We're skipping one and we're going to go here. Grab another piece of mesh. Lay it curl size down on the table. Get your ruler out. Clip it at five inches because that's your center. Turn it around. Find your center again at five inches. Another tip, if it doesn't lay flat and you have difficulty with the gathering, lay something heavy on that end like that or your phone or anything like that if that makes it easier for you. So five inches, gather it in your thumb and fingers crawling up the center towards that clip on the top that we're using to keep our focus on the center. Pull this off. Go back to gathering it. Take off the clip. Gather it and holding it in your index finger and your thumb and positioning the mesh as close to circle as possible. On the next one, I'm not going to talk through it, so we can just watch. Okay, let's get this one in here. And if you don't like how it came out, because I don't, <laughs> I'm going to reclip it in the center. Just don't do this too often and gather up the center again. What I did, I think what my mistake was there was I didn't grab it right once I was done. So it was off-centered a lot more than I would have liked. Okay, I think that's better. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely better. Let's put that in there. Real quick. Tighten low. One, two, three. Okay. We're going to bring this up and over the cut edge, up and over the inside cut edge. Hold it with the pipe cleaners. Never grabbing at the edge because that will change the pattern of your mesh and you don't want that. Curl it under. Hmm. Bring this up a little bit. Let's see, what do I want to do here? Get that in place. Put those pipe cleaners up in the air. And so I'm going to do this next one. Just have you watch. And another recommendation is make sure you have at least three feet of working space so you're not struggling.
this one's needs to poof up in the sun I got her, huh? Okay. All right. All right, so let's see. Another piece of mesh. We'll get these six pieces on the bottom layer and then we'll move on to the ribbon. So curl side down. Measure your center at five inches. Clip it. Oh, this clip. I need a new clip. <laughs> turned it around and measuring it in the center. I'm going to take my thumbs, put it at the end, gather the mesh into my thumbs, trying to keep it as small as possible so we can keep this wreath nice and thin. All right, loosely in my thumb and forefinger so I can manipulate the mesh to where I want it to sit. Trying my best to get the edges even with each other. Then we're going to go over with the pipe cleaners horizontal to us. Try to do that ahead of time, then that way you're not trying to do two things at once. Put it in there in the centered. Take that pipe cleaner, low and twist three times. Two times is fine, but three times is more secure. We're just making sure that it's in there nice and secure. So now we're going to take the outside cut edge over the inside cut edge and the outside cut edge over the inside cut edge and now this piece of mesh lays over that just like that one lays over those two. We're going to make sure we've got a proper circle on the outside. I'm going to manipulate that just a little bit to get it the way I want it. Never grabbing at the edge because that changes the design. That is not round enough for me. So let me bring it back here. Bring it out there. Bet you that'll fix it and grab it under here. Nope, I took it too far. It's interesting doing this with a video camera. It looks different in the video camera than it does to me. That looked like it was perfectly round to me, but then I looked into the camera or into the monitor and realized, nope, not so much. <laughs> so, another tip I have for you if you're if you're struggling with you know the shape, grab your phone, take a picture of it with your camera to see it differently. It does make a difference. Okay, so now we're going to put the final piece in this level, and don't worry about this one. It's sticking up a little bit. By the time it's fully assembled, it'll be nice and flat. So let's curl side down on the mesh. Get your ruler out again. Clip it at the center, which is 5 inches on 10 inch mesh. And put a little bit further along. There we go. Turn it around. Well, that's nice and hooked on there. Measure it again at, for the center. Start gathering into your thumbs using all of your fingers to crawl up the top of the mesh to gather it into your thumbs. On the next layer, I'm going to show you how I do it when I'm working in my studio on lots of product for my shop since I do so many shows. Holding it loosely in your thumb and forefinger. Bring out the edge, make sure it matches up as best as possible without grabbing the very edge, okay? We're coming back over here to the base. That, I think that's better, yeah. As much as you can do in your hand before you put it in the pipe cleaner, the less you have to struggle with getting it straight, I mean curved, just kidding. Put it in there, centered. Put that pipe cleaner tight and low, three times twist it. There we go. Two to three times. Then you're gonna take the outside cut edge over the inside cut edge, outside cut edge over the inside cut edge on this side, and then curl in your edges, take a look at it, and see if you need to make any adjustments. Woo, that one's, see how far off that is? Ooh, Nelly. So I'm gonna hold the pipe cleaner. 
grab at the base of the pipe cleaners to even this up. I still have to do a little bit more. If it's super bad, take it back out and regather it. I try not to do that because the less you handle it, the better. Okay, still stinker. Let's bring it out a little bit more. Okay, that should do it. Yep, that it did. Okay, put that pipe in there. All right, so now we've completed our first layer of mesh. It's time to cut all of our ribbon. We cut the ribbon all at one time so that we're done with it. And if for some reason we have to walk away from the project to do something else, we don't have to guess where we left off. It's much easier this way. Because um, that happens. Life happens. So, in this kit, I went with two two and a half inch ribbons and one and a half inch ribbon, meaning the width this way. Um, you can do, if you're doing this on your own, you can do just two. Or you can do one two and a half inch and two one and a half inches or like what I've done today which is two two and a half inch ribbons and one one and a half inch ribbon and like I said before it's already been folded at 12 inches if you don't have um, the time to do it you can buy the kits obviously but if you're doing this on your own all you need is a ruler you just wrap the ribbon around the ruler because it's 12 inches right no special tools needed. So we're going to start with the two and a half inch sunflower ribbon. That's the one I'm going to put on the bottom, the green in the middle, and then the matching one and a half inch on top. We're going to cut the bundles. You'll either get one or two bundles of each, each ribbon for your um, ribbon tails. It just depends on where the ribbon was on the roll, whether they're two piles of two bundles of ribbon or just one. In this case, it's a brand new roll of ribbon, so I was able to do 12, 12, and 12, so there's only three bundles. Could be more, it doesn't, no worries. If I mix and match ribbon for more than one roll, I always make sure they all match in color because you don't want mismatched ribbon. That can be a challenge. So we're gonna cut all 12 of these at the fold, I always put a couple fingers in the middle of both sides because half of the stack, the printed side is facing the table and half of the stack, the printed side is facing the ceiling. So that way I can flip them easily. So I cut at the top and I cut at the bottom. And as you can see, let go. I didn't cut all the way through okay half of the stack is upside down so I'm just gonna flip that like this make sure you have a trash can too that's important and now I'm gonna fold them all in half with the finished side on the inside and I'm gonna do this with all 36 pieces of ribbon because there's 12 of each design you want to make sure the top edges are matching and you put a nice heavy crease at the bottom of the fold. That is your guideline for putting it in the pipe cleaners in the base. So, yeah. It's almost as bad as the mesh today sticking to each other. That happens because of the wire. Almost done with the first 12. Hold that in half. Give it a nice good thick crease. Then I'm going to do this one. So I'm going to find my center. There it is. Put my fingers in there to hold it all. Cut at the top. Move my hand down, cut at the bottom. So now you have 12 of the one and a half inches. I turned it over and I'm going to fold it exactly the same way. 
as I did the two and a half inch. Fold it in half with the top cut edges next to each other evenly. Fold it, give it a nice crease at the bottom. Is that one, two, three, four? And like I said, I put an extra piece of each ribbon, most likely, except for the very first uh, kits I made. There's 13 pieces and you only need 12. So that's folded. Crease on the bottom. Crease on the bottom. Crease on the bottom. One more to go. And then there's that. Okay, so that's done. Now, the solid colored ribbon is the same as the others, except it's important to make sure that you're very careful when you're flipping your piles because this ribbon looks, for all intents and purposes, the same on either side, but there is a finish side and a back side. So I try to make sure I don't have any interruptions when it's time to cut solid ribbon. Again, we're cutting it down the center at the top. Take that scissor head down the center again to the bottom. And even though it doesn't look like it to you, these are upside down. So we're gonna flip them on top of the other stack so that the finished side is facing the ceiling and the unfinished side is facing the table. So now we're gonna make sure that we fold them with the finished side in. Always the finished side in, it just makes it easier and then you're not guessing later did I do this right is that the right side of the ribbon most people won't notice it but I know as a creator I'm always questioning myself did I fold that the right direction so we're folding these all in half with the finished side on the inside making sure there's a good crease at the bottom of the ribbon for what the next step entails. Okay, fold it in half, finish side inside. Fold it in half, finish side inside. Fold it in half, finish side inside, and the last one. So that was 36 pieces of ribbon plus. So now we are going to give um, each of the pieces of ribbon a haircut. <laughs> what we're going to do is at the top, we're gonna to create what's called a V or dovetail or ducktail. And the way we do that, we're gonna do this on all 36 pieces, is we're gonna take that side that's been folded, the crease side, always remember to place it down to the table and the cut side at the top, facing the ceiling. We're gonna fold it exactly in half so the, the wires are lined up, and that's gonna create a fold. We're going to take that fold and we're going to take the scissors and cut from the fold to the top of the wire, which is basically a 45 degree angle. Cut it from the fold to the wire and we have our dovetails, okay? And we're going to do that 36 times. So creased, folded side down to the table, fold it in half, cut it from the fold to the wire. Crease side down, fold down. Line up the wires, cut from the full to the wire at a 45 degree angle. This is the last of the prep work, fold side down, to complete the wreath. Fold side down, fold it in half, wire to wire, cut from the fold to the wire. Crease, fold it down, fold it in half, wire to wire. Cut it from the fold to the wire. In just a few minutes, I'm going to show you some of the common mistakes made and how to fix them if you make a boo-boo. All right, fold side down, fold it in half, wire to wire, cut from the fold to the wire at a 45 degree angle. Fold side down, cut, fold the wire to wire, cut from the fold to the wire. Fold down, Wire to wire, cut from the folded side, 
to the wire. I mean, when your scissors are getting this, these sharpened. Fold side down, wire to wire. Cut from the fold to the wire. Fold side down, fold wire to wire. Cut from the fold to the wire. Let me see how many I have here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Did I count them? Clean up your mess as you go before you go on to the next one. I find that it's less chaotic when you clean as you go. Okay. Now we're going to go to the two and a half inch ribbon. That was a one and a half inch ribbon. Is there 13 here? Let me check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, that's because it's my kit, duh. All right, fold side down. Fold wire to wire, cut from the fold to the wire. Fold side down, fold wire to wire. From the fold to the wire. I'm gonna take a piece of random ribbon that I have here. Cut this off so I can show you mistakes and how to fix them, okay? So pretend this is one of the ribbons in the kit. You folded it in half, but you didn't get the wires lined up perfectly. They're in a little bit, right? You're making the cut just like you're supposed to. Okay, they ignored that. <laughs> it's been one of those days. All right, so fold it where it's not lined up. You can see how far off that is, right? So this side is much smaller than this side. You can easily fix that by folding it in half correctly, getting it lined up. There's a gap here. You're just correcting it ever so carefully by cutting right along the short side line and now it's even. Now another mistake people make, let me get that piece off, is they cut the V too deep. So instead of 45 degree angle, they're like way down here. Okay? Don't do that. See how deep that V is? It may seem pretty, but what happens is when you put it into the wreath, it starts doing this. If that happens, just fold it in half again. And you're still going to cut it from that point, but you're going to take it at more of an angle. Correct it. See? Now you're going to lose a little length, but you can make it work if you're careful, okay? The other problem people do is they don't pay attention and they don't put the folded side down to the table. They fold it, put the folded side towards the ceiling and cut it. That's what happens. That you can't fix, okay? So hopefully that helped you with troubleshooting if you should accidentally not cut it proper the first attempt. You can usually fix it with minimal loss of ribbon. But I also put one extra in so that you can have a backup in case you have an oops moment. It happens to all of us. If I get talking and somebody's around, I've been known to make all of those mistakes, okay? I'm just going to continue to cut with the fold down on the table, the cut side towards the ceiling, folding it wire to wire, and cut from the fold to the wire. Well, there's another mistake people make that's okay to you can fix pretty easily. Let me get another scrap ribbon. So let's get this cut straight so it's fresh. Okay. So you're folding it wire to wire, and you have a fold. You always cut from the fold. If you cut from from the wire, if you cut from the top this way instead of this way, this is what happens when you cut downward. Don't do that. Oops! 
Unless that's the design you want, <laughs> which you can do. But again, that's easily fixable. You haven't really lost any, any of your, your ribbon. You're just gonna cut it correctly and you're back to good, okay? Hopefully that helped. If you have any questions, always feel free to reach out through the YouTube page or go to Facebook to Wreaths by Marguerite. I'll be more, to ha more than happy to answer any questions you have. So fold side down, fold it in half wire to wire, cut 45 degree angle. Fold side down, cut from the fold to the wire. Fold side down, fold in half wire to wire, cut from the fold to the wire. I think that covered all of the boo-boos that you can make with a ribbon. Fold side down, fold in half wire to wire, cut from the fold to the wire. Fold side down, wire to wire, cut from the fold to the wire. Fold in half. Wire to wire, cut from the fold to the wire. And don't cut too far down because you can also lose length in your room that way too. So fold side down, fold wire to wire, cut from at a 45 degree angle from the fold to the very top of the wire. Move these up here. Fold side down, cut wire to wire. I mean fold wire to wire cut from the fold to the wire. I am just struggling with my words today. Sorry guys. So fold side down, wire to wire, cut from the fold to the wire. It just goes to show, no one's perfect. <laughs> fold side down, wire to wire, cut from the fold to the wire. Fold side down, Wire to wire, cut from the fold side to the wire. Fold side down, got a piece from the edge that didn't get cut off. Fold side down, wire to wire, cut at a 45 degree angle from the fold to the at top of the wire. Folded side down, fold wire to wire, cut from the fold to the wire. I know that's a very, re this is re very repetitive, but I do that so that you don't forget. Fold side down, wire to wire, cut from the fold to the wire. Fold side down, make sure it's nice and lined up. See how that was a little bit off? Make sure that wire's flush. Fold it in half, cut from the fold to the wire. Fold side down, wire to wire, cut from the fold to the wire. Fold side down, cut side up. Fold it in half, wire to wire. Cut from this fold to that wire at a 45 degree angle. And we're done with that. Okay, let's get the rest of this trash out of the way, and then we'll make our ribbon tail bundles, which is what we call them in the wreath community. So we want to um, put them together in bundles in the order we want. Since this one's going to be the one we want on top, we put that inside of the green one. And this one's the bottom, we put that in, on the outside of the green one. So we're going to make 12 bundles. You always put the top ribbon that you choose and it's always your choice. You don't have to do it in the order that I did it. I always tell everybody to put your favorite ribbons on top. But since my favorite ribbon is the sunflower ribbon and there's both, I'm putting the one and a half inch on top and the two and a half inch on the bottom to frame the green ribbon. Hopefully that makes sense. When we're done, we're gonna to count to make sure we have 12 bundles. Because we need six for the bottom and six bundles for the top. 
Now be careful. You saw there where that ribbon stuck to each other. Be careful when you pull them apart because you can end up pulling the wire out of the ribbon and you don't want that to happen. Because sometimes the ribbon, the wire pops out a little bit from cutting. I'm not exactly sure why, but it happens. And we want to make sure that extra wire is cut off. So take that, put it in the green, put it in the two and a half inch version. We do this till we make all our bundles. And that's also a double check to make sure we have everything we need before we go any further. One and a half inch. There. One and a half inch inside, two and a half on the outside. Okay, so let's count. One, two, three. Four, five, six. I'm going to separate that now. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You should have thirteen in most cases in most kits, okay? So this six is going over here because we won't use it till after we put this mesh on. And now I'm going to show you how to put the, mat, the ribbon in. Now with the mesh, we had the pipe cleaners horizontal to us with the mesh going in vertical. Well, with the ribbon, it's opposite. So we're gonna have the pipe cleaners vertical so that we can put in the ribbon horizontal. See? So the process to do that is we're gonna take that fold in the center. That's why it was so important for us to keep it centered gather it into our fingers, hold it with your index finger and thumb, and then turn the ribbon out into an inverted V. This is a V this, this way. We're going an upside down V. The reason we do that at this point is when we put it in the pipe cleaner, it helps the ribbon to stay pointed to the outside of the wreath. Otherwise, they tend to go in, and we don't want that. This does help. So now we're gonna take our pipe cleaners, and we're gonna twist it tight and low once, and then we're going to twist it up until we create a minimum of a one inch twist. See that? So let me do it like that so you can see it. We've got almost one. I need to twist it a couple more times. I recommend six to eight times. Okay. Six to eight twists. Yep. Usually do it. That was eight. And then we cut the excess pipe cleaners off. The trash is over there. All right, and then I'm going to tuck that in after I position the ribbon. <clears throat> so what we do is we lift the top two ribbons up in this particular example and bring your ribbon up, pop the little bubbles that are created from gathering it with your finger, and give it a little bit of a curl as we're doing it. So I positioned this side this way with this first, then the green, then the two and a half. So for me, I'm gonna do the opposite on this side. I am gonna lift the top two up and bring the two and a half inch sunflower ribbon down, the green in the center, and the one and a half inch is going to be positioned up. Then I push in the stub in towards the mesh. Don't manipulate your ribbon too much. You just wanna get it in basic condition, in position because once the wreath is complete, you'll go back and pull everything out and make sure everything's in place. So just like the mesh, I'm gonna skip one and go to the next one, put my pipe cleaners vertical, grab another bundle, open it, and start gathering it where they are folded in the center. Go up, hold it in my index finger and thumb, make that inverted V. Come back over here to the wreath, put it in there horizontally, tighten low one time, and then up six to eight, two, three, four, five, six. Make sure you have at least an inch. Cut the excess pipe cleaner off. Put that in the trash pile. And now I'm gonna make sure to 
copy the pattern on the other set. So two and a half inch there, green in the center, one and a half inch down, making sure to pop those little bubbles created from gathering out. Then I'm gonna go to the other side and I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna put the two and a half inch over here. Okay, if you want to mess with them now, put the pipe cleaner down and then just hold it at the top so it's not moving on you. All right, so there you go. We're gonna skip, put this vertically with another bundle. Open it up, gather it down the center into your thumb and four fingers and then bring down the ends in an inverted V. Put that in there. Tighten low once and then twist up till you get six to eight twists, which makes it about an inch. Cut off your excess, excess pipe cleaners that are not part of the twist. All right, pop out those gathers, lift up the top two ribbons, separate, separate, and there they are. When I'm making in the studio eight to 10 wreaths a day, I mix it up a little bit, meaning I do one side one time, one side the other side of putting the ribbons in their position because I like to not be bored because it's a lot of repetitive motion. So lift these two up, bring this one out, and then position these two. Oop, see, look at this. This is one of those days. Push in your pipe cleaner. Okay, and now we can do the other three. So vertical. Gather up the center, fold the inverted V, tighten low once and then six to eight times to make that one inch twist. Cut the excess off of the pipe cleaner. All right, so I'm gonna do this side this time, just to be confusing. <laughs> Lift the top two up and bring this one out. Remember, we're always wanting it to face the outer edge of the wreath so that it can be seen and not hidden. We want everybody to see this pretty ribbon. Plus, later on when we're putting the sign in, we wanna make sure that we don't try to poke a hole through the ribbon. Oh. On this wreath, we're not going to have to put pipe cleaners through the mesh. This one has holes pre-drilled in the sign, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Next, vertical pipe cleaners, horizontal ribbon, gather, gather, gather down the center, inverted V. Oh, I was out of camera. Sorry, guys. Put it in here. Tighten low with the pipe cleaner once, then twist up six to eight times to get a one inch twist. Cut the excess off. Put that over there. Pop those bubbles out. Lift, I'm gonna lift these two up so I can put this one at the back, this one in the middle, and this one at the front. And I'm going to go over here and do the opposite. Put the two and a half inch at the front, green it in the middle again, and then the one and a half inch at the top. Push that pipe cleaner in. You can hold it up there. Now, whenever you're positioning the ribbon, never grab it from the cut edge because you're going to have the same issue as the mesh. You'll cause fraying and you don't want to do that because then you're going to have to cut it. And every time you have to cut it, it makes it shorter and we don't want that. We want it to be seen. Okay, so this is the final one on this layer. Ribbon bundle of ribbon tails. Gather it up the center where the crease is from folding them in half. Make that inverted V. 
put it in the pipe cleaners, do it nice and tight once, and then twist up six to eight times. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That was enough on this one. Cut that excess pipe clean off and position your ribbon. I always like to take the top two out of the way so I can position the bottom one, then I position the second one, then I position the third one on top. And again, you can position them regardless of where they are in the stack, in the bundle, you can position them wherever you want. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine. This is just a guideline. I mean, shoot, you if you wanted to put both sunflowers at the bottom, you could. Or if you wanted to put the green at the bottom, you could. But this is just how I want this wreath for me, for my shop, to look. Just like where you put it in the stack. That's entirely up to you, but I always put my favorite, the prettiest, in my opinion, on top. Push that pipe cleaner in. So now we've completed one full layer of the wreath. So now we're going to bring those other six sets of pipe cleaners up and in between each piece of mesh that we placed in the wreath so that we can add the mesh to these six pipe cleaner. That's four, five, and six. And real quick, I'm going to turn it over to give you a quick look of what it looks like on the back now. See? Okay. Here we go. I'm going to move all the tools out of the way. We're back to the mesh. So we have six more pieces of mesh to place in the wreath. And remember, always, always, curl side down. Get that ruler out. Clip it at five inches. Five this way, Marie. Okay. Five inches. Turn it around. Lay that ruler down. Find your five inches and gather it with your thumb and index fingers. And all the other fingers are gathering it up there into your thumbs. I need to attach this mat to the table so it doesn't move so much. Ah, sorry guys. I forgot to, to adjust the pipe cleaners before I got started. So now see, it's in my hand. I'm fixing the pipe cleaners. So the pipe cleaners are horizontal like we did in the bottom layer with the mesh. We take that mesh, put it in the pipe cleaner vertically. See this mat is really moving tonight tight and low two or three times on all three twists. It's not the same with the mesh as it is with the ribbon. Get it up and out of the way. Put the outside cut edge over the inside cut edge. Take that outside cut edge and put it over the inside cut edge. Turn your edges inward underneath. Now that you have a bottom layer you get to manage around that. So again, we're going to do every other. It's a dimensional design re thing for me. And I find that the mesh lays flatter so that if you are putting it on a screen or storm door, it stays as flat as possible. If you're not putting it on a storm door and you don't care how thick it is, you can be less finicky about how it lays. That's entirely up to you. Clipping it at five inches, making sure it's curl side down, using the ruler to find the center, and this is 10 inch mesh, so the center is five inches. Okay, five inches. Gather into the thumbs, using the rest of the fingers to crawl up the mesh, gathering it into the thumbs, using that clip at the top, to make sure we stay centered. It's a great visual to help with that with the solid color 
ribbons when you have a not ribbon I said ribbon again when you have mesh that has a pattern into it like stripes or plaids that's very helpful for keeping in the center when you are gathering your mesh and in that case you don't necessarily have to use the ruler or the clips to keep an eye on your center. I'm going to show you a couple other tricks with the mesh now that we've done it this way so many times. Get this outside cut edge over the inside cut edge. Outside cut edge over the inside cut edge. Turn under the edges. Okay. All right, so now on this next one, I'm not gonna use the ruler. If you don't have a ruler, that's fine too. All you have to do is make sure your mesh is still turned, curl side down, just fold it directly in half. That'll help you find the center and you can clip it there that way. One last tool you have to worry about, right? Get that on there so it doesn't fall off. Oh, how dare you. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. Hope everybody's had a good day. It's not going to stay. Boy, this wreath has just been challenging me today, but it's still looking great. Just goes to show. You can have a bad day and it still come out. So now on this end, I'm folding it again in half to find my center. Like that. So there's my center. Just make sure that lays flat, and this is getting curlier because it's from further in the roll of mesh. I'll put that there to hold it down so I'm not biting it so much. Start gathering into your thumbs. There we go. Sorry. I tend to fling things like that. Sorry, I shouldn't do that. Okay, got it ready. Put it in this pipe cleaner that is horizontal. And I'm putting the mesh in vertical. If you do enough of them, like me, which is a couple thousand, <laughs> two, three, and low. Even with the solid color mesh, I can do it without the clips. But I recommend since if this is your first time making a wreath, don't do that unless you're sure you can get it right. All right, I have the outside cut edge over the inside cut edge on both sides and now I am curling under the mesh and it sticks to itself so it holds it in pay place. Put the pipe cleaner straight up the center, okay? All right, so the next three I'm gonna do as an alternate method. It's really not alternate, it's just a little bit different. We're on the last three. I need one, not the other two. We always, no matter what, lay it curl side down on the table. We always find our center, whichever fashion you choose to use. Okay, turn it around. Ah! Find your center again, which on the 10 inch mesh is five inches. And I use both hands just for a couple gathers, and then I take this hand and hold it up here and just gather towards it with one hand. If you feel more comfortable doing it that way, by all means do it. That's traditionally how I do it nowadays. I'll do it two more times to show it to you. Put that in there. Pipe cleaners are horizontal. Center the mesh in there vertically. Tight and low, you twist that pipe cleaner. One, two, three. And another thing, don't be afraid of the product. Don't try being gentle. You can have some power behind your twists and such because you want to keep it nice and low. Get that outside cut edge over the inside cut edge. This is off a little. I don't like that. Let me see if I can grab it by the pipe cleaners, pull from the inside. 
get that together. The most important part of the mesh process is making sure you have a rounded outer edge because the outer edge is all that people are going to see. This is going to be covered by a sign and more ribbon as you saw in the bottom layer. And then I like to cut off any phrase as I go so I'm not having to do it at the end. I don't always accomplish that. Sometimes it is at the end. But then that way there's less cleanup for you to do on the wreath. Because you're never going to escape the phrase. Not with the mesh or the ribbon. Mesh side, mesh is curl side down. And that ruler over here, find our center, which is five inches on a 10 inch piece of mesh. So it's 10 inches this way, 20 inches this way. So let's turn it around and do that one more time. Would you stay where you're put? Thank you. <laughs> so we're gonna do this on the other end again. Find our center, which is five inches. I'm gonna gather it into my thumb and forefinger, and then this is the technique I use most of the time. It helps me stay on center, and it helps the curl side stay down so I'm not fighting with it. Take that clip off at the top, hold it loosely in your thumb and forefinger so you can make any adjustments you need to make. Bring it over to the wreath and put the, the mesh vertically centered in the horizontal pie cleaners. Okay. Tight and low, you twist this one, two, three, and you're gonna take that outside cut edge over the inside cut edge, the outside cut edge on this side, and put it over the inside cut edge, all right? Then you're gonna curl the, the edges down of the mesh as much as it'll let you. <laughs> put the pipe cleaners up in the air so they're out of the way. Make sure that it looks how you want it to with a nice curled round edge on the outside, and we have one more piece to go, okay? <clears throat> Final piece of mesh. Pie cleaners are horizontal to you. It's mat. Curl side down on the mesh. Five. It's a 20 inch piece of mesh this way, 10 inches this way, so the center is five inches. Clip it at the five inch mark. Let's see if that helps. It just doesn't have the clip that it used to. Turn it around. Making sure it's curled side down still. Take that ruler across. Find your five inches and start gathering into your thumbs up the center, staying as close to the center as you can. It's so much easier when you have a pattern and so much quicker too because you're not having to fight to find the center. Okay, this is our last piece of mesh. We're gonna put it vertically centered in the pipe cleaners, which are horizontal. And now we're gonna tighten up this pipe cleaner, low and tight, twisting it one, two, three, okay? Piece of fray right there, let me grab that. This is completely normal. So now we're gonna take that outside cut edge and place it over the inside cut edge on this side, the outside cut edge over the inside cut edge on this side, that's curl under the outside edges as much as it allows you to. It's going to pop up here and there. It just is what it is. But the fact is it will cling to the mesh around it and you can keep it in place that way. All right. So that is the last piece of mesh. Now on a wooden or MDF sign, you're going to feed the pipe cleaners through the mesh to the back metal frame to attach it. But in this case, the sign has two pre-drilled holes in it, both here and here. So we're going to use the pipe cleaners on the wreath to hold it in place. I always like to stand up at this point if I'm sitting and find the mesh poof that I like the best and place that at the top so like a clock, which is 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock, you want to have your pipe cleaners in front of you placed 
so that there's one set at 12 and one at 6 that gives you the center of your wreath so that you can place your sign properly. Um, and normally, if you don't have a sign like this, you place it in the center like that, usually between these four, but with the sign centered with the 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock position. But in this case, we don't have to add any other elements. The hole is in there, so what we're doing is we're putting the pipe cleaner through those holes, and that will keep the sign centered. So you put it through, and we tighten it up, but not super tight because then the, the sign would bow. We don't want that, so twist it two or three times. You turn it around and do the same thing at the top. You want it to sink in a little bit, the sign to sink in a little bit into the wreath, but not so that the sign bows. We don't want that, okay? I always try to put the sign in first. You can do it after you put the ribbon. You'll see the entire sign that way, but I just find that it looks nicer when you have the ribbon on the top to frame it. I'm going to sit back down, and now it's time to add the last six ribbon bundles. I find that, okay, first of all, we don't just go around and put the ribbon in. We want it to sit in a particular order, in my opinion. Again, it adds character and um, dimension when you do it this way. I always like to make sure that the ribbon bundles at 6 o'clock and 12 o'clock are on top of the ribbons beside it. So this is how I more and more are placing the ribbon in the wreath. Now on this level, we're not looking to do an inverted V with the ribbon like you did on the bottom level layer. So again, I'm going to gather it up in the center where it's creased, and I'm going to do this one to the left of the center put it in there and leave it out like that. Tighten low two or three times. One, two, three. Don't cut your pipe cleaners at this point because we're going to go over a couple different ways to use them. So on this level, I turn the wreath, pop the buttons out, the little pockets, and then I'm going to take and I'm going to lift the top two. I'm going to put that one there. I'm going to put that one there. and I'm going to put that one there. These are more of a starburst, and then I take my fingers under each one individually, or all three as a bundle, and do that, okay? Oh, that's what I forgot to bring. Oh, I forgot one tool, guys. Uh-oh. Where is it? There it is. Okay. Get that out. So, let me finish the other side of the bundle. This has been one of those days. I guess we all have them, right? Lift these two up, bring this up, separate them out, position them where you want them, right? Right? So, this is the other piece you need to have as far as tools. Either a thin dowel or a pen or a pencil because you're gonna use it to twist the pipe cleaners around that are left after you've put the ribbon in and you twist it around it and you can either pull it out to show the little curly cue piggy tail I like to call them piggy tails or uh, compact them down at the base of the ribbon in the center again making a part of the mechanic the mechanics of the wreath part of the, the beauty we'll go back and fold it again so there's that technique then I'm going to go to the right of center and put in my bundle and it's going to go in in the same exact fashion. I'm gathering it down the center where the fold is and putting it horizontal to the vertical pipe cleaners, twisting it tight and low three times. One, two, three. And then I'm going to pop those bubbles out and I'm going to put the ribbon in the positions I want. I want that one there that one there and that one there and you can also use this dowel or a pen or pencil to give it a little bit more curl that was, that's what made me remember that i forgot to bring it out i'm sorry guys just find a pen or a pencil that'll work just fine i have a dowel because i put them in my kits for um in-person classes so they have everything they need to use 
That is not provided in your kit. Okay. Another way that you can take care of these um, pipe cleaners that are left is to twist them like you did on the bottom level before you cut them. This time I'm going to stay closer to two inches and twist. And you're going to lift, cut these pieces off. I'm not because that's not my technique today. Cut these extra pieces off the top and take that twisted material, twisted pipe cleaner, and you're going to bring it around underneath after you've lifted the ribbon up. And then all you have is a little bitty nub in the center, okay? But that's not what we're doing today. So I'm going to put it up in the air after I untwist it. Okay. So I still have three twists in it. See, this ribbon has a mind of its own. They all do. So now we're going to do the center. That way, this bundle sits on top of these two bundles. Hopefully that is clear. I'm going to do it again at the top. We'll gather it where it's folded in the center. Put it in the pipe cleaners. Put it tight and low three times. One, two, three. You can do two. But that's up to you. At least two times twist it. So now this, since I'm doing every other with the two and a half inch sunflower closest to the sign, the other three, including this one, will have the one and a half inch up here, the green in the middle, and the two and a half inch at the bottom. Again, it's giving it more dimension, more patterns. And it's on top of this. So I'm going to do that on the other side. Remember, always move the wreath to make it easier for you to work with instead of contorting your body to make it easier for the wreath. The wreath needs to do all the work, right? <laughs> okay. And I will fuss with this a little more at the end once I stand up. Okay, so now we're going to turn this around. And we're going to do these two and then this. So, since we have two and a half inch up here, one and a half inch up here, two and a half inch here, this should be one and a half inch up here. So this is also going to be the same as these two. I'm going to make sure that the two and a half, half inch sunflower ribbon is at the top. So, open up my bundle, gather it in the center, and put this one at the 12 o'clock position. Nope, I lied. I'm not doing that yet. You guys, what's going on here? We're doing the sides. <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyway, we're putting this in here. So it's going to overlap that. Not the 12 o'clock. One, two, three, tight and low. Separate and pop that bubble out from the gathering. So since the two and a half inch was there, I'm going to put the one and a half inch on the top. So the two and a half inch, I separate it from the other two and put it down. Then I put the green in the center as always and the one and a half inch at the top closest to the sign. Do that on the other side. Lift these two up, bring this one down, and then separate these two. I like to do it at an angle, but if you're more comfortable doing it with it directly in front of you like that, that's fine. There's no wrong way to do that. It's whatever you're most comfortable with. So we're going to skip 12 o'clock, which is the top center, and we're going to go over to the last one on the side. Open your bundle. Gather it up the center. Place it in the bundle. Tight and low, twist the pipe pin is one, two, three. Okay. I'm gonna turn it this way. And um since the two and a half inch was at the sign side, I'm gonna put the one and a half inch right there. Right there, like that. So two and a half inch sunflower green and that 
Now if it pops out, this mesh pops out like that, just tuck it under. It's got a mind of its own, I'm telling you. Especially the whole, this whole wreath has had a mind of its own. All right, got that side. Now we're gonna do this side. Popping out the bubbles from the gathering. Put that green in the center. And that's done. Let's see what I got going on here. All right, so the last bundle, horizontal to me, the pipe cleaners, because I'm going to put, nope, <laughs> I'm, I don't drink, so it's not that, <laughs> ever, so I'm putting the pipe cleaners vertical, putting the ribbon horizontal, fluffing out the ribbon, so since the one on either side of it has the one and a half inch closest to the sign, we're putting the two and a half inch closest to the sign on this bundle. Okay, separate all the ribbon out. All right, so now all the ribbon's in. I won't fluff it quite yet because I'm adding those buttons on this one to show you another way to accessorize without adding to the deck. So what we're going to do is we did the um, three twists. You could, When you're using the buttons, you could take it down to two. You're going to feed one, one side of the pipe cleaner through that shank. That's what they're called, buttons with shanks. Through the shank on the back of the button push the button all the way down to the ribbon, and then twist the pipe cleaners like we did on the bottom level. So you have at least a one and a half to two inch twist. Cut the excess off. And in the, make sure your sunflower is centered. Isn't that pretty? Lift up the ribbon on one side or the other and place that stub of twists and then reposition your ribbon. I'll go back and do that at the end. But see, not cute? Perfectly matches everything that's going on. Let me undo this little piggy tail I did, for example. So you can do the piggy tails. You can do the twist and hide it behind the pipe cleaner behind the ribbon and just have a stub showing, or you can do something like this. Put that pipe cleaner on one side through the shank, feed it all the way to the bottom, when my fingers decide to cooperate. <laughs> twist, twist up, up, twist, twist, twist. Make sure you have one and a half to two inches of twist. Everything's against me today. <laughs> the clippers don't like me. <laughs> That's where I say walk away, but I am not going to give in to this reason. I'm going to get it done. But if you know, if you've got a bunch of things going on in your life, this wreath style is easy to walk away from and come back and pick up where you left off without feeling confused. Put that pipe cleaner through the shank on the sunflower. Feed it all the way to the bottom. Twist that pipe cleaner up between one and a half and two inches in length. Cut that excess. off. Lift one side or the other of the ribbon up. Lay that pipe cleaner behind it. Make sure your sunflower is centered. <laughs> Reposition your, your ribbon. Goodness gracious, Marguerite, today is one of those days. Okay, feed this through the pipe cleaner. Isn't that a cute little accent? Just kind of finishes it off nicely. 
Another idea is to use tulle, spelt T-U-L-L-E, in six inch cuts and make a little poof in the center. You could do that as well. Um, in some of my other videos, which you can go back and look at, I've also put florals in here. And I'm going to be doing that off and on in the future. Woo! Run away. All right. I'm going to take up one side. Making sure it's under because that's the 6 and 12. We want those on top. Two to go. Put that shank through the pipe cleaner. Bring the sunflower to the base. See, the sunflower keeps spinning. This is the wreath, man. It is got so much attitude. Cut that excess off if you twisted it. Oh my goodness. Lift up that ribbon. <laughs> Tuck that pipe cleaner underneath. You don't want it to come out this side because we don't want to see that. Reposition your ribbon, making sure that sunflower is centered. Last but not least, last sunflower. I'm going to do that one. Nope. That's too many times. Put that pipe cleaner through the shank. Pull it through so that the, come on, sunflower goes down to the base and then just twist it, twist it, twist it. Somehow this pipe cleaner came out uneven. I'm not sure why, but you know what? It will be hidden so no one will ever know except for you guys watching this. I'm just gonna cut the excess off of the second pipe cleaner. <laughs> wow. Come on, let go. All right, there we go. Lift up one side, tuck the pipe cleaner under there so it's not seen. Make sure your ribbon is in the right positions. And it's complete, so now we're going to go around and make sure everything looks nice and fluffy and it's in the right position. I'm going to fluff up the ribbon. You don't have to fluff it up. You can just put it in position if you're putting it behind a storm door. In that case, you would just want to make sure that they're flat and straightened out like this. But. For display purposes, I always fluff it up so that you can see how big it can become and know, hey, I don't have to we have a huge wreath. I can still make this one look just as fluffy. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to save that one because that's the center. I'm going to save that side until I get this side of this one done. Get that there. Fluff it up. I'll go back and make sure it's... That look good? Yeah. Then we're gonna go on this side. Make sure our bundles are all properly laying down. I'm gonna do this one. And this is six o'clock, so I'm gonna make sure this bundle is over the bundle next to it. Because that's how I like to roll. That's how I roll. That there. Does that look? Oops, camera. Let's see. This needs to go down this way a little bit more. Make sure that sunflower is positioned right. Okay, we have one more section on the top. This should be here. All right. Now we go around the bottom and lift up the mesh a little bit because we don't want to just pull on the ribbon because it'll fray. Get all this ribbon facing the outside of the wreath in the order and fashion that you want it to be seen. This is where I always do my standing the most. I gotta get up and down. 
Some people stand the whole side and God bless them. I wish I could do that. I can't. Some people sit the whole time. And I can't do that because I don't feel that I can get a proper perspective of the whole wreath. Unless I look at it as a whole from above. Part of my problem today is that my wrist hurts. I slept wrong last night. We're almost done. I may have done this one again, but I'm going to do it one more time. Okay. So let me take a look at it in the camera. All right. There it is. So there you have it. Isn't that beautiful? I love sunflowers. They're so fun. And aren't those little buttons an added bonus? Isn't that cute? Remember, they don't come with the wreath, but you can buy them at Hobby Lobby. Um, they're usually right around the fabric uh, cutting area in Hobby Lobby on a spinning um, fixture. So that's where you're going to want to look at it. I'm sure you can find them everywhere. But also remember, you got to make sure if you get the buttons, they have a shank on the back. That's a little uh, elevated piece with a hole in it. Um, that's what works best for this. Also, you can use tool, put florals on it. If you watch enough of my videos, you'll see that I have a wreath that has florals on it that was Easter. Yeah, it was Easter. So there's that. Also, reach out to me if you'd like to have a bow made to match the wreath for a, an additional um, investment. I can do that for you as long as I have the product still in stock. Right now, as of the time of making the kits, I still have extra product that I can make uh, bows for it. Um, if you're not putting it on, on a front door that's got a storm or screen door, that would be so cute right there in the bottom. Um, please, if you would, subscribe to my channel. I would appreciate all the support I can get. I am a small business owner. The word of mouth is very important and I would appreciate your following. Also, I have a Facebook page. Um, you can like and follow that too. It's Wreaths by Marguerite, the Etsy shop where you purchase the kits to make this wreath and to buy a finished product because all of the wreaths I make in the tutorials are always on sale and in that shop. It's Wreaths by Marguerite once again and I hope you all have a great day. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on my little flubs today because you know none of us are perfect and you gotta laugh at it, right? So have a good one. Thanks a lot guys. Bye-bye.